Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have seen how to solve a homogeneous system of equations. The general idea is the following. We have a matrix A in F m cross n and we would like to solve the system A x equal to theta m and the general strategy is to reduce A by elementary row operations to the row reduced echelon form of A. Then we solve the system A r x equal to theta m. So, we solve this and the general idea for solving this is pivotal variables are eliminated in terms of non-pivotal variables. We will write n p v for non-pivotal variables and non-pivotal variables are chosen arbitrarily. That is the general strategy for solving homogeneous system of equations. Now, why does this work in homogeneous system and why it does not work in non-homogeneous system? Let us look at a non, the non-homogeneous system corresponding to A. So, let B be in F m and we look at A x equal to B. If we want to copy what we did for homogeneous system, again we will reduce A to the row reduced echelon form by E r rows and we would ask whether A x equal to B is equivalent to or having the same solutions to A r x equal to B. This is the question we will ask. Is it true just like in the homogeneous system and B was theta m, these two were equivalent. Suppose we now take a B which is not theta m, will these two be equivalent? Let us look at an example. Let us consider the matrix A is 2, 3, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1 what is suppose b is 1 2 note that a is 2 by 3 it has 2 rows and 3 columns. So, m is 2 so b must be in f 2 so let b be the mid, uh, vector 1 2. What is the system a x equal to b it is now 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus x 3 is 1 x 1 minus x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 2. Now, supposing we do a elementary row operation a r not necessarily a r let us even take a very simple elementary row operation and say we make one elementary row operation and get the matrix a 1. For example, in this case let us say we are interchanging the first and the second row. So, the A 1 will be 1 minus 1 1 2 3 minus 1. Now, what is the system A x A 1 x equal to B now? The system A 1 x equal to B becomes x 1 minus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 1, 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus x 3 equal to 2. Now, we see that these two systems are not equivalent, they are not equivalent. To see this just observe that x 1 equal to 7 by 5, x 2 equal to minus 3 by 5 x 3 equal to 0 is a solution 
of the system A x equal to B, but not the system A 1 x equal to B. And hence, when you perform an elementary row operation, A x equal to B is not necessarily equal to A 1 x equal to B what went wrong whereas, this worked for homogeneous system this is not working for non homogeneous system. So, what does an ERO do? So, let us analyze why this did not work what does ERO do? An ERO on the matrix is same as as far as the system A x equal to B is concerned similar operation on the left hand side of the equation of the equations. Why only on the left hand side? Because A is the coefficient matrix it just has collected and stored the coefficients on the left hand side of the equation these are the coefficients of the unknown variables x 1 to x n. And therefore, any elementary row operation on A is equivalent to performing the corresponding operations on the left hand sides of these equations. In the case of homogeneous system, if we want to balance these equations, we have to perform the same operations on the RHS, but in the case of homogeneous equations all RHS are 0 and these elementary operations leave them as 0. You do any elementary operation on zeros and it remains to be 0. So, ERO's keep them as zeros. And therefore, we do not have to worry about performing these operations on the right hand sides of these equations to maintain the balance of these equations. Hence, A x equal to theta m will be equivalent to A r x equal to theta. When I say equivalent, they mean they have the same solutions. Therefore, since the elementary row operations retain the zeros as zeros, the corresponding equations will be this e equivalent. On the other hand, if you look at a non-homogeneous system A x equal to b, as we see in the above example the ERO's alter the RHS. And therefore, in order to maintain the balance of this equations we must perform on B whatever ERO's we perform on A. Thus, in order to handle a non homogeneous system, since the right hand side is not 0, we have to keep track of the changes that are taking place on the right side of the equation as we are performing the changes on the left sides of these equations. So, in order to keep track of all these situations, we shall introduce some notations. We first introduce the notion of the augmented matrix. Let us start with the matrix A which is as usual in F m cross n and we have the right hand side of the equation F m and therefore, we have the non homogeneous system A x equal to B. This is our concern we want to find solutions for this non homogeneous system. So, we define the augmented matrix which we denote by A sub aug this is the definition. What we do is we take the matrix A and we append an additional column at the end this is the column formed by the vector B. So, in order to keep in track that the last column was appended from the right hand side of the equation we write it as A with a bar separating it from the B. Now, this will be a matrix now 
which is the same number of rows as A, but now it has an additional column. So, this will be an M by N plus 1 matrix. For example, look at the previous example we had. If we had 2, 3, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and we had since this is a 2 by 3 matrix, M is 2 in this case. So, B will be B1, B2, and therefore, if you look at the system AX equal to B, we will be defining the augmented matrix which is obtained by keeping the A intact and just appending as one more column the B1 and the B2. Note we again put that bar in the before the last column a long line to imply that the what is coming is from the right hand side of the equation. Now, this will be a 2 by 4 equation. Now, what should be then our general strategy for non homogeneous system. The general strategy for non homogeneous system let us look at A x equal to B and as usual suppose we apply elementary row operations in order to get the row reduced echelon form of A. So, we apply elementary row operations on the matrix as usual as we did in the case of homogeneous systems and get the row reduced echelon form of A. Now, we have to apply the same ERO's in the same sequence whatever order in which we applied the elementary row operations to go from A to A R, we now apply the same elementary row operations in the same order on B, say we end up with a B tilde. Then since we are now balanced the right hand side by performing the same operations, the system A x equal to B, the non homogeneous system A x equal to B has same solutions as the non homogeneous system A r x equal to B tilde. So, it is not that A x equal to B is equivalent to A r x equal to B, but A x equal to B is equivalent to A r x equal to B tilde. The operations have to be performed on the right hand side. So, we have therefore, if we this is equivalent to saying if we start with the a augmented matrix, the augmented matrix A B and then do the E R O's so that this A part becomes the row reduced form, the corresponding right hand side will become A B tilde. Now, as we said, A x equal to B will be equal to A R x equal to B. So, now we look at A r x equal to B tilde. Instead of analyzing the system A x equal to B, we can analyze the system A r x equal to B tilde since these two systems are equivalent. Now, let us look at the matrix A r x system A r x equal to B tilde or the matrix A r B tilde. Suppose the row rank of A is say row. What does that mean? This means the A R the row reduced echelon form has row non zero rows and M minus row zero rows and in the row reduced echelon form all the 0 rows come at the bottom and the non zero rows come at the top as we had seen earlier. So, the first row rows of the matrix A r will be non zero and importantly row plus 1, row plus 2 up to the mth rows of A r will be 0. So, the row plus 1, row plus 2, etcetera m throws 
of a r will be 0. If that is the case, if you look at a r x equal to b tilde, the rho plus 1th equation will look like since the left hand sides all the, the entire row is 0, it will look like 0 x 1 plus 0 x 2 plus 0 x n. Now, the right hand side will be b rho tilde and so on up to the mth equation. The mth equation will be again like 0 x 1 plus 0 x n equal to b m tilde. Now, if any of the b tildes from rho down is not going to be 0, we will end up in a contradiction. So, if any of b rho tilde, b rho plus 1 tilde, this should be b rho plus 2 tilde and so on, b m tilde is not 0. Say, b r tilde is not 0, where of course, r is between rho plus 1 and m, one of these one of these equations. So, if b r is not 0, we get the rth equation as 0 x 1 plus 0 x 2 plus etcetera 0 x n is equal to b r tilde which is not 0. No matter what values of x 1, x 2, x 3, x n you take, the left hand side will be 0 and the right hand side will be not 0 and therefore, no x 1, x 2, x rho, x n can satisfy this equation. Now, what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, so what is the conclusion we make? A necessary condition for the system to have a solution is that these equations from the rho plus 1th onwards like the rho plus 1th equation, rho plus 2nd equation, the mth equation all have to be balanced in the first place and in order that they are balanced, we must have b rho plus 1 tilde, b rho plus 2 tilde and b m must be 0. So, therefore, the first conclusion, major conclusion is that a x equal to b is consistent. If it has to be consistent, a minimum requirement is that b rho plus 1 tilde etcetera b m tilde or 0. What does that mean? If b rho plus 1 tilde b m are all 0, it means you in the matrix a or b tilde, in the matrix a or b tilde, if you look at the rho plus 1 throw onwards, the left hand side is 0, right hand side is 0 and the left hand side is 0 and the right hand side is also 0. And therefore, in a r b tilde, the first row 0 will be non-zero and the remaining will be 0, which is amounts to saying that the rank of the matrix A augmented bent by E r rows to A r b tilde and this will be exactly the A augmented matrix rho reduced echelon form. And therefore, since this also has the same number of non-zero rows as the A r, we have the rho rank of A augmented is equal to the rho rank of A. So, thus we have this again we will sum it up A x equal to B consistent implies rho rank of A augmented 
is equal to rho rank A. So, we now first get hold of a necessary condition minimum this much we require in order that A x equal to B is solvable and that requirement is that the rho rank of A augmented is equal to the rho rank of B. Conversely, suppose rho rank A augmented is equal to rho rank A. Suppose this minimal requirement we are asking for is met with then the rho plus 1th equation onwards in A r x equal to B tilde will just be 0 equal to 0, 0 equal to 0 and so on 0 equal to 0. So, they are automatically taken care of uh, whatever values for x 1, x 2, x 0 n we give the rho plus 1 th equations or onwards are automatically satisfied. So, the only thing that we have to worry about are the first rho equations. Now, in the first rho equation so rho rows is what we have to worry about. Now, let us look at the first non-zero rho how does it look like? The right hand side is obviously B 1 tilde. Now, the left hand side it will have a first non-zero entry remember we call that as the k 1th column. So, it will start with the k 1th variable and that coefficient will be 1 because we are in the row reduce echelon form. So, it will be like x k 1 plus other variables equal to b 1 tilde. How about the second? Now, let us write all the other equation. In the second one we will have x k 2 and because the rho reduce form the pivotal variables move to the right we will have x k 2 onwards all the other previous variables will not appear and so on that will be equal to p tilde and it will go on like this and we will have finally, x k rho tilde plus etcetera equal to b rho tilde. This the structure of the first rho equations which only matter because the latter equations are all 0 equal to 0. So, the first rho equations which matter will look like this. Now, since any column that supports a pivotal variable is 0 in below this x 1 none of the other variables pivotal variables will appear. Similarly, above and below x k 2 none of the pivotal variables will apply and so on and so forth and it therefore follows if we choose x 1 equal to b 1 tilde x k 2 equal to b 2 tilde and so on x k rho equal to b rho tilde and all other x i as 0 then the above rho equations are automatically satisfied because x k 2 does not appear here x k 3 does not appear here x k rho does not appear here but the other things which appear have all been chosen to be 0 and therefore x 1 k 1 equal to b 1 tilde satisfies this similarly x k 2 equal to b 2 tilde satisfies the second equation and so on and therefore we have the vector x equal to x 1 x 2 x n where x k j is equal to b j tilde for j equal to 1 2 up to rho and x j equal to 0 if j is not equal to any of the k i's is a solution of a x equal to b actually it is a solution of a r x equal to beta uh, b tilde and hence a solution of 
a x equal to b. Thus, we see that if we had assumed that our condition the minimal condition is satisfied namely that the rho rank of a augmented is equal to the rho rank of a. If we had assumed this minimal condition then we get that a x equal to b has a solution. So, let us write the conclusion rho rank a augmented equal to rho rank A implies A x equal to B is consistent. Now, previously we got the conclusion that when it is consistent the rho ranks must be equal. Now, we have got the conclusion if the rho ranks are equal it is consistent putting all these two conclusions together we get this theorem that a b in f m n b in f m a augmented is the matrix obtained by appending this column b to the matrix a then with this notation the theorem is a x equal to b is consistent if and only if rho rank A equal to rho rank A augmented. Now, if you recall the first lecture one of the fundamental questions we raised was our question was what is the criterion for the system A x equal to B to have a solution. Now, we have an answer for this question through this theorem which says the criterion required is that the rho rank of A must be equal to the rho rank of A augmented. Now, what happens then when this criterion is met? we found we will now a, we have got a solution as observed before we will call that solution x p now x p as x 1 x 2 x n where let us be very precise x k i is equal to b i tilde where B i tilde is the matrix or the vector obtained by applying the same ERO's that we applied to A to B in order to reach the rho reduced echelon form for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to rho where rho is the rho rank of the matrix and x j equal to 0 if j is not equal to k i for 1 less than or equal to i less than if any one of these k where x k 1 x k 2 x k rho are the pivotal variables decided by a r the rho reduced echelon form of k. What do you mean by the pivotal variables decided by a r? a r has this pivotal ones the leading non zero entry in each non zero row in a particular column in the first row it appears in the k 1 column then x k 1 is a pivotal variable in the second uh, row if the uh, leading one appears in the k 2 column then x k 2 is the pivotal variable and so on. So, we get a solution for a x equal to b. Now, recall that we said that when we have a non homogeneous system the solution consists of two parts one find a particular solution of the homogeneous for the non homogeneous system and find all solutions for the homogeneous system and therefore, the general solution 
of the non homogeneous system A x equal to B will then be x equal to x h plus x p. Remember we have we are looking for a particular solution which we have now captured x equal to x h plus x p where x h is found by solving a r x equal to theta m this is what we did in the last lecture and x p is as above. We have just now seen how to choose it the pivotal variables are chosen to be p1 b1 tilde b2 tilde and so on b rho tilde and the non pivotal variables are all chosen to be 0. So, thus we have a complete picture of the solution for the non homogeneous system when the consistency criterion is satisfied. So, let us look at uh, the final conclusion then how do you handle a non homogeneous system. The way to handle a non homogeneous system is first again we have a matrix m cross n b this f m we want to solve the non homogeneous system a x equal to b. Now, the criterion to be checked first. So, first you define A augmented to be A B, then we reduce A to A R the row reduce echelon form, apply the same E R rows to B, then we get b tilde then a augmented goes to a or b tilde. So, we can straight away start with a augmented and start applying this and now the criteria is we must have row rank a equal to row rank a augment. When this is satisfied general solution is x is equal to x h plus x p x h sol to find x h sol a r x equal to theta m. Remember eliminate how do we do this eliminate pivotal variables in terms of non pivotal variables and then to find x p as above. We have seen how to choose x p recall that we choose the x p is by choosing this pivotal variables to be b i tilde we choose the pivotal variables to be b i tilde and all other non pivotal variables to be 0. Then once we have chosen the uh, x h and x p we have the complete picture of the solution of the non homogeneous system. Note we shall again repeat that if rho rank a augmented and rho rank a where equal we could do all this suppose this is not equal we still we only know that the system is not consistent that is there is no solution but we do not know what to do then. So, we still do not know what to do with such a system.
which is a major part of the problem still unhandled. But what we know is among the several questions that we have asked, we have the answer to the question as what is the consistency criterion or what are the conditions that B should satisfy in order that the system A x equal to B have a solution. We have an answer to that question that is that rho rank A equal to rho rank A augmented. The next question is if B satisfies, does B satisfy this criterion? Suppose the answer is yes, then we know how to find the solutions. We know when it is unique, we have already seen that the system has a unique solution if and only if the homogeneous system has only the trivial solution and it has an infinite number of solutions when the homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions. So, let us uh, therefore, put all these questions to this. So, for a non-homogeneous system, the first question was what is the criterion that P should satisfy for A x equal to B to have a solution. This is the first question that we raised on the first lecture. We have now an answer to this question namely rho rank A equal to rho rank A augment. We shall be seeing the same answer in different formats later at least we are now one answer. Then we ask the question does B satisfy this criterion. We said two possible answers yes and no. In the case yes, the conclusion is there is a solution because now consistency condition is satisfied, there is bound to be a solution. Then we asked how many, we said 1 or infinite and if you recall we asked the question when is it 1 and when is it infinite. Now we have the answer to these questions, the answer is 1 when A x equal to theta m has only trivial solution. This is one form of the answer. Again, we will see the answer in different formats later. And again, when is it infinite? When A x equal to theta m has non trivial solutions. Then, when it is only in this situation, when there is only one solution what is the solution? Remember we have seen that any solution in the form x is equal to x h plus x p, but in this case x h is only theta m because that is the only solution that a x equal to theta m has and therefore, the solution the answer is the x p that we got that is the only solution because plus x h will give you nothing. Now, in the case of infinite solutions, we ask what are all the solutions. Now, we have the answer to this all solutions are of this form x is equal to x h plus x p, where x h as we explained above are the solutions of the homogeneous system and x p is the particular solution that we obtain. Subsequently, we ask another question namely any criterion to choose a unique representative among this infinite number of solutions, we have not got the answer to this. So, that is left unanswered and any question that we raise following this obviously remains unanswered. So, this is one portion of the series of questions that we raised, we have not yet answered and when the answer when B does not satisfy the consistency condition, no solution exists. So, what do we do? 
in such a situation again we do not know the answers to this series of questions. So, among the various questions that we raised about a homo non homogeneous system of equations, we have answers to some of them on this side, but there are even on this when B satisfies the consistency condition in the case when there is an infinite number of solutions, we really do not know how to pick one of them. We know all the solutions, we have a problem of plenty, there are too many solutions now, but we do not know which one is the right representative solution, we do not have the answer to that question. And in the case of when B does not satisfy the consistency criterion, we simply do not know how to proceed to <coughs> get anything meaningful for that system. These are the questions which will be the remaining questions which will be addressing as we move along. But let us now look at one simple example to illustrate all these uh, methods of solving a non homogeneous system. You may recall we looked at a matrix in the last lecture which I repeat uh, 1, 2, 3, 13, minus 2 minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, minus 5, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. We had considered this matrix in the last lecture and we found that the row reduced echelon form of this matrix was the following 0, 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 0. We had found the row reduced echelon form of the matrix by applying the relevant uh, EROs. Recall there were two stages. The first stage was called the first column operation, where we uh, brought the first columns is, uh, subsequent to one by one smaller and smaller sub matrices, and then we had a cleaning up operation at the end of which they got a row the row reduced form of A as follows. Now, if you want to solve if if you look at a x equal to b the non homogeneous system then we we solve instead of a x equal to b we solve a r x equal to b tilde not a r x equal to b now b tilde has to be obtained from b using the same operations that we use to go from A to A R. So, let us recall what were the operations that we performed to go from A to A R. We started with A, then we applied the first column operations on the first column of the matrix A and these were the following. Then we looked at the second sub matrix by got by uh, ignoring the after the first uh, column operation on the first column of A. Then the smaller sub matrix we applied R 3 minus R 2 R 4 plus 2 R 2. Then we went to a further smaller sub matrix and we applied the R 4 minus R 3. This was the sequence of operations, first column operations that were performed on smaller and smaller and smaller matrices. Then followed the cleanup operations. The cleanup operations that we had were 2 R1 minus 2 R2 and that was followed by R1 minus R3 and R2 plus R3. So, therefore, at the end of which we got A R. So, in order to solve A x equal to B, we must solve A or x equal to B tilde. For that, we must apply on B all the sequence of operations. If we apply on B these operations in the same order, in the same order we get B at the end of all these EROs reduces to the following form B 1 minus B 2 minus B 3 B 1 plus B 3 
2 b 1 minus b 2 plus b 3 minus 5 b 1 plus 3 b 2 minus b 3 plus b 4. We leave it as an exercise to perform you start with a b which is b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4, 4 columns, 4 rows because our matrix now is a 4 by 3 mat 4 by 5 matrix m equal to 4. So, take a b which is b 1, b general b which is b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 and apply the sequence of operations in the same order one after the other to the b and when we do that you check that you get this matrix. This is our b tail. So, we have to solve a r x equal to b tail. Now, look at what is happening. We have now this matrix a r which are the fourth row as 0. Whenever we add a 0 the corresponding row in the b tilde must be 0 in order to get a rank of a is equal to the rank of a augmented. So, the rank a equal to rank a augmented this is the consistency condition demands minus 5 b 1 that fourth row entry in b tilde must be equal to 0 that is b 4 must be equal to 5 b 1 minus 3 b 2 plus b 3. This is the consistency condition that b must satisfy in order that the system. So, if b satisfies this condition then solution to a r x equal to b tilde exists and hence solution to a x equal to b x. So, suppose b satisfies this. this condition C. Let us call this condition as C. Suppose B satisfies this condition. So, suppose we are given a B 1 B which has the components B 1, B 2, B 3, B 4 where the fourth component B 4 is related to the first, second and third components by this relationship. If the four components are related by means of this relationship then the system has a solution and what is this solution? So, system A x equal to B has solution. Now, what is the solution? That we will have to find. First of all, remember we got the x p. How do we get the x p? x p is x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5. There are 5 unknowns because the matrix has 5 columns. There are 5 columns first variable, second variable, th a third variable, fourth variable and fifth variable. So, each column corresponds to one variable. Since the matrix A has 5 columns, there are 5 unknowns x 1, x 2, x 3, x 5. N means the number of variables that is 5. So, we have uh, the 5 variables must, must be found. How do we? I'm sorry, this is uh, x n. So we will we'll call it as x p, the particular solution. Now, how do we find x one, x two, x three, x four? First, we fix the pivotal variables. What are the pivotal variables in this case? They correspond in the first row. The pivotal variable, the 
the 1 appears in the first column. So, x 1 is a pivotal variable. In the second row the pivotal variable appears in the third column. So, x 3 is a pivotal variable and similarly in the third row the 1 appears in the fifth column and therefore, x y is the pivotal variable. So, the first we fix the pivot to get the particular solution we fix the pivotal variables x 1, x 3 and x 5 x 1 the the 3 variables are b 1 tilde and b 2 tilde and b 3 tilde in that same order. Now, what are these b 1 tilde b 2 tilde as we have found above, above this is b 1 minus b 2 minus b 3 this is b 1 plus b 3 and this is 2 b 1 minus b 2 plus 2 b 3. So, we have we fix the first the pivotal variables which are the non pivotal variables x 2 and x 4 and they are chosen to be 0. So, first we get the particular solution which is obtained in this manner the pivotal variables successively are taken to be the successive values of b 1 tilde b 2 tilde b rho tilde rho in this case is 3 and non pivotal variables are chosen to be 0. Now, what is x h? x h is the solution of the homogeneous system which we found refer the last lecture the x h is solution of a r x equal to theta m and we found that to be of the form alpha into minus 2 1 0 0 0 plus beta into minus 1 0 minus 4 1 0 where alpha and beta can be arbitrarily chosen in f. So, now we have got this and therefore, the general solution of a x equal to b is x equal to x h plus x p where x h is as shown above and x p as as we chose here and x h is as here. So, we have got the complete solution of the system. For example, if we had chosen b equal to 1 0 0 5 then we see the consistency condition c is satisfied. What is the consistency condition? The consistency condition was b 4 equal to 5 b 1 minus 3 b 2 plus b 3 in this in this situation b 1 was 1 b 2 was 0 b 3 was 0. So, the right hand side is just 5 minus 0 plus 0 is 5 and left hand side is b 4 and we have chosen b 4 to be exactly uh, 5. So, the consistency condition is satisfied and therefore, the solution exists. The solution exists and solution is given by x h plus x p and what is x h? We have this x h in this format already and all that we have to find is the x p and x p format is here. Now, we have to choose x 1 equal to this. Now, since b 2 and b 3 are 0, we have to choose x 1 as b 1 which is 1, x 3 as b 1 plus b 3, b 3 is 0. So, again x 3 has to be chosen as b 1 which is 1, x y has to be chosen as 2 b 1 which is 2 and these two terms are 0 and x 2 and x 4 are 0. So, the x p turns out to be x 1 is 1, x 2 is 0, x 3 is 1, x 4 is 0, x y is 2 and plus x h will be plus alpha into minus 2 1 0 0 plus beta into minus 1 0 
minus 4 1 0. So, that is we have the complete solution. If we chose B equal to 1 1 1 1 the consistency condition is not satisfied. So, no solution. So, we do not know what to do after this. So, now we have a partial answers to or answers to some of the questions that we raised. In order to get to the other questions and the answers to the other questions, we need to develop more machinery. In the next lecture, we will look at the fundamental basic mathematical structure that we need namely the vector spaces.